Welcome to Dropping In, a podcast of storytelling and interviews with your host, Winter Olympian Mercedes Nickel. Thank you for dropping in today. I'm all about being real and true to who I am. I have teamed up with Sway, a company that is all about showcasing the importance of showing up unprocessed, unfiltered, and unapologetically themselves. Seemed like a pretty good fit for me. Sway is a brand built on purpose. Sway is committed to supporting communities and charities across Canada. I've chosen a cause that is dear to me, CanFund, directly supporting Canadian athletes. Sway is making a donation on my behalf to CanFund. Sway is made with real juice and real good vibes. Sway is a delicious tasting vodka soda with nothing to hide. This is a special series where I have a co-host, Miss Martha McCabe, Olympic swimmer for Team Canada, is joining me. Now, this is a series, series number four, where we will be talking with Team Canada athletes that are potentially and most likely going to Tokyo 2021. It's 2021 because of COVID. Thanks a lot, pandemic. Anyways, I hope that you laugh, learn, and enjoy this series with Team Canada's Olympians. Let me introduce the sport and guest that we will be dropping in with on this episode. This event first appeared at the 1912 Olympics and is where you can win the title of World's Greatest Athlete. It's not for the faint of heart. This event is mainly a male-dominated event where athletes compete over two consecutive days in a combination of sports. To be clear, it's 10 different sports in one event. Day one is 100 meters, long jump, shot put, high jump, and 400 meters. Whew! Day two is 110 meter hurdles, discus throw, pole vault, javelin throw, and 1500 meters. The winner is determined by the combined performance in all sports by a point system in each sport, not by the position achieved. It's math, and I'm not the best at math, but I heard that scoring over 9,000 points is really rare and has only been done a few times to give you a little perspective. Don't worry, online you can find a sport calculator that can help you break it all down into the events and the point system and how that works. So if you wanna do that, you're gonna to wanna to Google decathlon. The guest that we will be dropping in with was identified as he crushed the 2016 RBC training ground. This is where Canadians partake in a variety of fitness tests to see if they have the possibility to win and gain funding for their training. Now, before that, he was the junior record holder for decathlon. He was then identified at the RBC training ground by Athletics Canada. Things in the decathlon world started to take off for him. In September 2016, he broke the 8,000-point barrier for the first time to win a bronze medal at a meet in France. Remember the point system? Scoring over 9,000 points is really rare. Well, 8,000 points got him a bronze. After that, in 2017, he became the Canadian and Pan Am Combined Cup champion in decathlon. In 2018, he took home silver at the Commonwealth Games in Australia. Now, we all have our injuries. He suffered injuries that sidelined him for almost a year. He came back in 2019, scoring a personal best of 8,453 points to win the DECA Star meet and qualify his spot for the Tokyo 2020 Games. He won bronze at the Lima Pan Am Games, and he made his debut at the World Athletics Championships, taking home fifth place. This son, friend, RBC Olympian, Pan American medalist, and soon-to-be Olympian is going to be doing 10 sports at the Tokyo Games. Let's check in with Pierce LePage. Oh, I've never heard that before. Did you hear that? Yeah. Recording in progress. Mm -hmm. Pierce, are you ready to drop in? I am ready. 
Okay, so we start, you know, my co-host Martha McCabe, Olympic swimmer, joining me today. We start with rapid fire questions to let the audience know a little bit more about you and an FYI to listeners and to peers. They're never rapid. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Number one, where in the world are you today? I'm in Toronto, Canada. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're going to go back chilling. and forth. So Martha's going to take the next one. Yeah, okay. I got question two here. Um, five years ago, did you think that you would be going to the Olympics for decathlon? Or where were you at there? Five years ago, that'd be yeah, 2016. No, for not for now, no. Especially at the start of that year, I was just a little kid, you know, just doing sports. I had no idea even how good I was or how I could be good. So, yeah, I didn't really expect it, yet alone almost make it that year, I guess. Uh, oh, damn. Cool. <laughs> so cool. Okay, number three, 10 sports. I'm just trying to wrap my mind around, like, how do you train for 10 sports in two days? Like, what's your schedule? Are you like, today I'm going to do javelin for like five minutes. Then I'm going to just run forever. Like, how does it work? Yeah, I know. My coach is like that Eastern European. So we just never stop training, essentially, <laughs> you know? So yeah, we try to cover like two events. I mean, each event like twice a week, one like bigger like block, one smaller block. So yeah. And then like we mix in like what I need or what I don't need. So like, I know I, I usually like to be pretty fresh when it comes to like pole vault and hurdles so we always try to get like two big sessions in for those two but like for something like long jump it's like I just go and run you know I like just I'll, I'll just do it day of what yeah like yeah. in the con yeah. like long jump it's just like I got that in my back pocket yeah I just yeah exactly so like there's some <laughs> events that like you can just pop off and do whatever well pole vault's like okay I need I need these I need to do this beforehand. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to do it in the competition. Okay. So cool. It's like I'm, I'm meter, intrigued. You just, you just run. So. You just run. I just run forever. Yeah. <laughs> so is that because you are like, you have more natural talent in like long jump? Or is it just because pole vault's like more technical? I just think for me, pole vault's more technical. And it's like more of like yeah. a mental thing to stay on top of it. Like for me, the hardest thing about pole vault is like taking off, like running you know, pretty fast at a little box and planting a pole and jumping there isn't like always the easiest thing to like get, like get in your head to say, I'm going to go do this. So just being able to keep doing that is, uh, yeah, you just got to kind of keep on top of it. And same with like uh, hurdles for me, it's just like, I'm just like, I don't like hurdles. I'm kind of terrible at hurdles. So it I just, uh, I have to do it, you know, just to get better. So well, long term, just, yeah, I'm kind of just like a natural in a way so i'm just intrigued I, this isn't part of it but i always add in random questions do you have a favorite out of the 10 oh pole vault for sure yeah pole vault's the most <laughs> it's like the most rewarding and like when you're like five meters in the air and you like fall down you're just like nice. and how many times in a day can you do pole vault isn't it like, like one of those sports that you're like don't do too much oh too much like takeoffs and stuff yeah uh, yeah but like you know when you're doing decathlon you just kind of go if you're, you're in the meet and you're yours yours keep going higher bars higher bars i've seen the athletes take like 20 jumps before so oh, wow. i hope i don't do that but yeah cool okay that is cool um okay uh what was your favorite game as a kid or sport when you said game i immediately went to like video games but i guess oh, uh, you do uh, like video games I do. Yeah. But, uh, I, think I was I thinking like was, kick yeah. the can or something like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I'm maybe. old though. I don't know. I'm trying to think. <laughs> you can say I video games. Like, I, I feel like it'd just be like hockey. I played a lot of road hockey. I played like oh, no. um, just like hockey, like the your local leagues and stuff like that. So I was always into that, at least sport wise. Everything else I just like did in like elementary school, just like because the only thing I did like outside of it, I'd say was uh, hockey. Then obviously I played a bunch of video games. Like what kind of video games? When I was a kid, it was more, it was like Super Smash Brothers, things like yeah. that. You know, I was a very <laughs> big GameCube kid. So, or I just watched my brother play like, you know, games I couldn't play because I was, I was too young and too bad at them. So, are, are you like, still into video games? 
Oh uh, yeah, very much so. What like, what uh, ones? Uh, I'm unfortunately a League of Legends player, so if anyone knows, I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the most popular game in the world. Okay. Yeah. So. I never got into I mean, video games. I was like a Sonic no. the Hedgehog kind of girl. <laughs> but yeah, I was always pretty active too. But uh, I just found League of Legends one day, and that was it. My life was over. So. <laughs> League of Legends. Yeah. I'm gonna look that I up. mean, it's probably not bad now because like you need to be just sitting down and recovering, right? So video games have to be kind of okay for you at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's not. Yeah, exactly. It's not a bad thing. It's like I just go home, relax. You know, go on my computer, and do stuff. Better than like, I don't know, being more active. I guess. I totally. Mean, so. yeah. <laughs> like a normal person listening to this right now is like yeah video games and then they don't actually know what you've done in your day to like be able to sit on the couch other than like yeah. train for two yeah. different sports you know, it's like if someone's hobby is like playing like volleyball or something like that it's like I don't know if I'm going to do that after practice. <laughs> Not it's sure. Yeah. Different. It's a little yeah. different. Um, okay after a long day of training it- <laughs> Sorry, how many sports did you say you did in a day? Like two sometimes? Or uh, would you ever we cover do like three to five? Three, three to, five, to five, sometimes six. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, what would you eat after that? Like, what do you eat to keep you going? So, I'm actually not, I actually don't have like the biggest appetite in the world. So, it's actually like a struggle for me to put on weight. So, like, I have to like sometimes even like eat junk food just to get the calories in. Okay. But, uh, yeah. I mean, What's your go f- go-to junk food? Uh, I'm a McDonald's fan. fan I, I knew lie. you were going to say I that. Just, and there's yeah. not going to be McDonald's at the Olympics this time. I'm I sorry. mean, at the Olympics, will be fine. Uh, I think all will be other things and I'll, I'll eat <laughs> properly. But, uh, you know, if it's like one in the morning, there's only one place to go, right? So That's true. That's true. <laughs> I love it. Nice, nice. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm up here. Number six. Uh, has sport taken you to some places that you never really thought you'd go around the world? Uh, yeah, I'd say like, I mean, everywhere it takes me. And I, I feel like I, I've never been, I never thought of myself as like being someone who is going to go travel and see the world and things like that. So like when you suddenly just end up like in Australia, like, how, like it's like, what? Well, how am I here? Why am I here? And it, <laughs> I like it though. I like I like going around and seeing the world now, and I like seeing different cultures and seeing how how like we're similar, how we're different. And I know Australia is one of like the best memories of my life. Commonwealth Games. I remember we were in the village and they had this like it was like a 20, 20 hour. It was open twenty hours with like a Australian barbecue. You just go and take whatever you want, and it was uh yeah pretty dope. Oh, I've n- I've That's only been to the thing. airport in Australia. It was. Australia was nice. I also like Spain a lot. Spain. I feel like (laughs) Spain is like a secret hidden gem that not everyone should go there, listeners, but it's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So secret. No one knows about it. So secret. Don't go to Spain. All the athletes love it there. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Okay. Number seven. Who is your hero? Mm, My hero. It's weird. I feel like I never had like super big role models growing up, but uh, I think the most impactful person in my life is probably just my coach. So he kind of keeps me uh, disciplined. Like, I mean, I've been training with him for like seven years and I knew him when I was like 12 years old. So it's like, he literally like, like raised me, especially because I'm with him so much, right? Like you're with your coach so much. It's like, Sometimes like you like I see my coach and I've been with my coach like more than I see like my parents, right? For sure. So it's like mm-hmm. it's definitely like that 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 like parent dynamic. So he's always been there to uh That's know, rad. And you have everything. that you have that trust with a coach too, which is so important. Yeah. Nice. Well, they see the highs cool. and the lows, so Oh, don't they ever it's mostly <laughs> yeah. lows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh what would you say if there's something specific and maybe there's a list of things i'm sure there's a list of things here but like what motivates you to train every single day uh it's weird so like the way i view it it's like motivation like for me it's like it's good to be motivated or not motivated but you can't just stay motivated all the time i'm sure like Mm -hmm. 
even you guys have days where it's like, I just don't want to go to practice. I'm not motivated. I don't want to do it. But like, I think it's more just about like the discipline, if that makes sense. It's like, even mm-hmm. though you don't want to, you go and do it. And that's like the most important thing. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I just focus on. And just uh, my coach is pretty good at like, get your, get your ass to practice, you know, <laughs> come on, do this. And I, I just kind of get into the groove of it. But uh, no, I guess it's motivating to like see progression. One, one of the things with like the Cathlon is that you're doing so many things and you have so much to improve on where I feel like seeing the improvement might be easier than like if you're a single event athlete focusing on something really specific and you're ready like mm-hmm. top of the line so that's always uh helpful I guess yeah that totally makes sense that totally makes it's a very like self-motivation as well like where you kind of dig deep and set goals for yourself yeah. is that something that you do yeah for sure and things like that just like oh you know I want to throw this I want to do that and then it happens or you work hard to it, towards it and you're like Oh, that's motivating I guess I'm motivated yes. to do that and you know like where you could be right and then there's so much you can look towards in like decathlon you have 10 events you can look towards and improve so it's so wild yeah. I'm like so stoked you're on this podcast because I'm just in awe of someone doing 10 sports yeah I and mean, it's also 10 things you can mess up so you know <laughs> yeah, you have 10 <laughs> chances it's so cool and the point yeah. system is really cool also, as well like you must not within a sport like or in a training week like you must not really get too bored right because you've got so many different things you're focusing on yeah that's one of like the big things I uh I also say about the Kaplan it's like sometimes I watch like other athletes train or like a long jump it's like all you're doing is running and jumping into a pit and doing like some side runs and doing weights like that's boring so like I always always say that like the Kaplan training is like way more fun than like single event training but like competing in a decathlon like sucks compared to competing as a single event I feel like that's the fun part for single event players where it's like I'm doing 10 things in two days it's the 1500 I want to pass out you know like I'm done at that point so what like just a packed two days and it's always two days right yeah yeah so yeah I was wondering that I'm like would they ever just jam pack it all into one day sometimes like uh, in Doha I think technically we were three days because we started the second day, like at 5 p.m. We finished like at 1 a.m. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. That sounds terrible. Yeah, I was running at <laughs> 1500. I was running like the 1500, like at 1 a.m. So. Oh, uh, my gosh. Oh, commitment. Yeah. This is commitment, people. Okay. Number wow. nine. Is there, to lighten the mood a little, is there anyone in the world that makes you laugh the most? I mean, I have tried uh, to make you laugh in person, and it's not always the easiest thing. <laughs> I feel like I have a weird sense of humor. It's gotta just be like my friends online, uh, just my my group of friends online. We, you know, we play games together, we laugh together. So okay. it's gotta just be those guys. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. You're very funny, though. No. I'm just, I'm just super. <laughs> I'm just go. super shy. It's not my. Okay. Fault. I tried. I remember in Toronto, I was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack him. I'm gonna make him laugh." <laughs> I'm just shy. All right, number ten. Yeah, number ten. Um, tell us, how are you feeling about Tokyo? Like, what's the status? And it's crazy. It's a weird year. How are you feeling? Like uh, about like myself. Like, uh, I feel good. Like, I feel like uh, I'm prepared. I feel like training is going pretty well. But, like, I had this weird thing where it's, like, I feel like I don't get, like, really excited or really, like, uh, into the moment until, like, I'm actually there. So, it's kind of, like, on the back burner. And, like, I'm also, I'm also like, a little paranoid where it's going to be, like, some last-minute cancel or something. So, I, like, until oh. I'm there in Tokyo, I feel like I'm not going to, like, feel the emotions or get super excited. I'm just, like, just keep working, keep training, work. You know, I've had other competitions and other stuff right now. So, it's, like, look towards that and then when i'm in tokyo having sushi watching anime then i'll be excited you know (laughs) there you go (laughs) do you have any like like thinking to tokyo do you have any expectations of what those games are going to be like i know they're going to be different due to due to covid but any like strange expectations i just feel like i'm gonna be like locked in my room all the time (laughs) but that's what i really feel like but uh 
hopefully yeah. uh, we're doing a training camp in uh, I forget where but a different part in uh, Japan so maybe I can see a little bit of the town or city around that but you know I doubt it so we'll see I know, <laughs> I don't know. and this isn't part of the rapid fire but like so and um, Mercedes maybe I'm jumping the gun here but like Pierce what when you guys go to Tokyo or to Japan before like is that just you with a few decathletes or is it with the bigger athletics team or like what's the who are you, who are you so with there? the entire like athletics Canada like organization they like organize a training camp beforehand before going like to the olympics we do it we did it in like commonwealth we'll do it in pan ams we we'll, won't like we won't be like in the village we'll be like somewhere else just like you can get like acclimatized and stuff like that so like mm-hmm. it opens up and then an athlete can go if they want to or not they can come whenever they want but it's just like open and available so i'm cool. gonna try and get there as early as possible so yeah cool. that's a good call i always like to get there especially with like time change and everything exactly it's- it's, I think that's a good call for sure. Just to be in the uh, area. I know the European flights ruin, they ruin me. So <laughs> I hate them. Tokyo Can coming you... back from Tokyo is pretty gnarly. Be ready to rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think it'll be like similar to Australia. So yeah. Um, yeah, Australia wasn't like the worst. Like I said, Europe is by far the worst time changing <laughs> time changes I ever go through so yeah yeah sorry Martha you were gonna say something we're done the rapid fire good job again never rapid but <laughs> now we're just gonna chit chat and uh and learn more about you and Tokyo and decathlon and see see where the conversation leads us did yeah. you have a question Martha that, yeah well I was just curious in that like prep camp can you like bring your video games or what because you might be locked down in there eh so I actually okay. thought ahead and uh, I bought myself a little uh, gaming laptop to bring. So nice. I have like my whole like real setup and stuff. So I was like, I might be gone for a while. And originally our plan, because I'm leaving Monday for Austria, our plan was to stay in Austria train, then go straight to the States, then go to Tokyo. So I was like, I was almost gone for like two and a half, three months. So I was like, there's no way. I'm spending three months like not playing games or not being online so I was like I am making this investment like now and I literally I, I ordered it like last week and I got it like a couple days ago so and it yes. all that stuff up and I'm <laughs> ready to play <laughs> so. Wait, so do you play again I'm so not smart when it comes to video games do you play like with just your friends or can anyone be like I am playing against Pierce I mean, I feel like no one will know it's against me, but yeah, they could play against me. It's like a multiplayer game, so it's like League of Legends is like 5v5, so play against five random players or with four random players if you're doing stuff. So I just yeah. I say that because I just watched um, The Last Avengers where Thor, I am total a nerd on this, where Thor's like got his headset on and like just bashing little kids. He's like, this oh, yeah. is Thor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I may or may not have the same vibes. You'll never know. (laughs) League of Legends, here you come. (laughs) Nice. Okay, so let's talk about how did you get into decathlon in the first place? Uh, Yeah, it's like a it's like a weird story. Also involves video games, but basically, I was like uh, in grade six. I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure you know, like you have those like track and field elementary school you know meets. So I did that. And I remember, like, I qualified for, like, triple jump or something like that. And I went to, like, our regionals. And I broke, like, the regional record, which is, like, not a, not really a big deal or anything like that. But then uh, my dad was talking about it in a meeting, you know, like, you know, like all parents do, just, like, talking about their kid. And my coach's former athlete was in that meeting. And he was a triple jumper. And he was, like, I want to, like, meet your kid and do this and do that. And then I met Kevin, which is his name, which is his name, and uh, he was like, "Oh, you're like, I think you're gonna be good." Blah blah blah. And I started training with him for a little bit, from maybe to like grade eight, and I was like, very like, we'll train for like a couple months and do one meet, and then call it the season. You know what right. I mean? And then uh, he was like, "I want you to train with my current coach now," and I was like, "Okay, that sounds pretty good." And my coach is like, "You're too young to train with me." and stuff like that because he was training like other athletes at the time and I was like I was a little kid and I was like okay so I did like the sensible thing and like 
quit all sports and just played video games all of high school. I didn't do any high school sports. I didn't do track and field in high school. Then uh, I was just like playing games. And then I, it was like the end of grade 11, start of grade 12. My coach is like, you're old enough now. And I was like, <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> let's train. And then I was uh, doing triple jump that year. And he was like, how about we try octathlon, which is like eight events. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, I don't, I don't know. Like I was just sure, why not? And then uh, I did pretty good at that. And that was the last time I ever triple jumped. So yeah. Damn. <laughs> Oh, and we started doing the cap. Never started doing the cap along those. That's really it. He just kind of just happened. And is that the same coach that you have now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, oh that's yeah. Cool. We've been together for a while. Yeah. It's like he literally dad. raised you. <laughs> yeah, actually. But he yeah. he denied you at an early age. <laughs> yeah, he did. he did. Yeah, tough love. He's kind of <laughs> smart. Like I like that. Get, wait till they're ready, you know, let the kid be the kid and then bring him in. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably should have did some type of sports, but I uh, did it. <laughs> yeah, so. Fair. That's so cool. That's a cool story for sure. Like, I do appreciate that you did get to live your high school life <laughs> the way that you I wanted. suppose. I just, yeah, I suppose I still was just gaming. But, yeah. <laughs> but did you do other sports on the side, not like track sports? I, I did nothing. I didn't do any sports at all. I wasn't involved in anything related to school. No programs. I was just like that kid you saw in the corner, you know, at, at like lunchtime. And then I'd go home, play games. But uh, fun fact is I actually got paid to play at some, like later on. So I was oh. getting paid to play. And then I got no, I was known as the guy who was getting paid to play video games. So. That was oh, me. so you're like a legitimate video game player. Like you're oh, good. Uh, yeah. I used to be, yeah. Uh, professional semi-professional yeah well you could oh. maybe go to the olympics for that as well because that's supposed to be uh, going to the olympics at some point I'm in time. all types of washed up now so i'm still really? good what? but i'm not that good you know well i don't know i'm gonna that's start cool. going yeah. on leagues of legend and see what's i'm just gonna search for you <laughs> hey, for sure. do you think that like from that time of being like a professional video game or I, and again, I'm like Mercedes, like, I don't know any, anything in this yeah. world, but do you, did you like take something from that? Like, were there lessons you learned in that? Like in terms of like being competitive or anything like that, that you've like brought to your like athletic career? I think uh, it's weird. Cause like, I feel like the biggest things I learned from League of Legends were like more like how to be a teammate type of thing. Cause like a team game all tracks mm -hmm. like a solo thing. But uh, I think like in general, just like the competing mentality, whether it's like, chess or games or um, you know snowboarding all those things it's just it's still the same so you just kind of learn that like I feel like my mental is a little better and things like that so yeah cool. like the normal athlete stuff so cool mm -hmm. shout out to to freaking video gamers they're they're a thing <laughs> yeah. that's a thing I know that yeah. um Pierce thank you so much is there anything else you'd want to share with the listeners uh, I don't know. I feel like we hit everything. I don't know. We did. We good. did. Let yeah. me know where everyone can follow you online. Yeah. So I'm uh, on Instagram at Pierce.Lapage. And that's basically it. I have a Twitter, but that's just for me to follow my gaming stuff. So go follow that one. You see it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't follow back. <laughs> awesome. Well, Pierce, thank you so much for dropping in today. Appreciate you and best of luck in Tokyo. Thanks for having me. As I said earlier, I'm all about being real and true to who I am. That is why I've teamed up with Sway, a company that is all about showcasing the importance of showing up unprocessed, unfiltered, and unapologetically themselves. Kind of like me. <laughs> Sway is a brand built on purpose. Sway is committed to supporting communities and charities across Canada. I've chosen a cause that is dear to me. Can Fund, directly supporting Canadian athletes. Sway is making a donation on my behalf to Can Fund. Sway is made with real juice and real good vibes. Sway is a delicious tasting vodka soda with nothing to hide. Cheers. Thanks so much for dropping in. You can find all the dropping in episodes on the Dean Blundell Network 
or on your preferred podcast network where you can subscribe and not miss an episode. 